no more. We need to remember that, you know, we are living this life here. And our life here is temporary. It's short. It's actually a very short time. Even if you live to be 100 years old, in the grand scheme of things, it's, it's very short. The Bible says, what is your life is but a vapor that appeareth for a short time and vanisheth away. That's how the Bible you know, tells us about our lives. And you know, it, the, the younger guys, the younger crowd, guys, women, whatever, it's harder for you to understand this. But the older you get, man, the, the faster time just seems to fly. And every single day and every single year just goes faster and faster and faster and faster. And you start realizing, oh man, where did all the time go? Where did it all go? Because when you're young, you've got this great vision. Hopefully, you've got this great vision, all the things that you can do. And everything's open before you. And you've got all this time. And oh man, I could do this and I could do that. And I could do these great works and great things. But be careful because that you actually work to do them because before you know it, you're going to turn around and say, what happened to the time? Where did it all go? It's not really that long. We have a short bit of time to work at. And you know what God wants us to do? He wants us to work. He wants us to get in the fight. He wants us to get it. He wants us to have to do something that really matters with our life. We need to get involved in the spiritual battle, the Bible says that, you know, our fight, our battle, we hear, we see here in the book of Joshua, Joshua was fighting physically. He was fighting physically to physically conquer the promised land and to inherit that land. Obviously, there's a spiritual application here. With all the fighting that he's doing and, and inheriting that promised land, we need to battle. We need to fight until we could enter into the rest of our Lord. The Bible says that you know, our battle is not a physical one. The Bible says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against uh, the, the, the spiritual darkness in high places and the, the rulers of the, of the darkness of this world. That's who our fight is against. It says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but that means we do wrestle. We still are in a wrestling match. We're still in a fight. As the Bible says, you know, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. And we, we, want, we need to be able to stand. We need to be able to fight. We need to be prepared. It is a fight. It is a battle. Don't be, don't be disturbed or brainwashed by the people that are brainwashed themselves, the Christians that want to tell you that, oh, you're not being very Christian because you're involved in some conflict. Because you're involved in, in some things that, that make people upset. They have this idea of Christianity that like Jesus would never say anything that might offend somebody. And that he would just go along to get along. Well, that's a false Jesus. They don't know Jesus very well if you think that that's how Jesus would act. I'm not saying they're not saved, but if that's how they think Jesus would be acting, they don't know him very well. They don't read their Bible very much. If I have to remind you, you know, Jesus was put to death for the things that he said. I think that that offended people, you know, to the, to the, if you offend someone to the point that they want to kill you and they're conspiring against you to put you to death, yeah, you're saying some things that people don't really like. Even his own disciples, when, you know, when, when he, in the book of John, when he's saying, you know, I'm the bread of life that came down from heaven, he says, you got to eat the br this bread and, and drink my bleed my flesh and drink my blood and, and all this stuff and, and people are just like whoa what are you talking about and a lot of people got offended at him when he was preaching that sermon and a lot of people left a lot of people who were following were just like whoa I don't know about this guy and you know what he said to his disciples he said does this offend you you offended you want to go go ahead you're going to go follow someone else go ahead and they're like Lord you know who else are we going to follow like we'd you got the words of life. We know, we know, you know, you're the Christ. So they followed him and they knew better. But a lot of people get offended. And, and the thing is, when you're in a war, when you're in a fight, you know, we're not, we're not, especially a spiritual one. How do you fight a spiritual battle? How do you fight a spiritual war? You're not picking up guns and arms, but we're definitely attacking. We're definitely doing something. So how do we do that? We have, what do we have to use? Our voices, right? Our actions, our voices, what we do, what we stand for, how we live needs to be 
public need, needs to be made known. Otherwise, who are you even fighting? What are you fighting against? We need to be able to stand up, stand tall, and stand out for what we believe and not allow wickedness to prevail.